I got a podcast, man. This is Dude, my podcast. Congratulations. Just Look, you. This table. Tell me about the table first. <laughs> You got good questions, man. Nah, man, I got eight. Yeah, we should start a podcast. Dude, you reckon? <laughs> Shout out to the bro that made the podca- this podcast table. <laughs> I fucking can't remember your name, but sick yeah. cunt, everything like that. Um, but yeah, this is my podcast. I've been wanting to do this for fucking ages now. And I'm finally here able to do it. And I'm fucking excited. I have my Uso fucking day one, Uso fucking winner right here. Happy so, to be here. How's it going, winner? I'm so, feeling good. Yeah, yeah, freaking, um, I flew winner down from Sydney, winners from Sydney. I am. And um, we met in Sydney. We uh, we met at the Fitness Expo when I was there for EHP Labs. Yes. And uh, winner lined up when people are lining up to get a photo with me. And winner's like, comes up to me and he's like, oh, um, bro, can we do a video? He's like, I do prank videos. <laughs> and I was like, oh, uh, oh, fuck, what, what do you wanna do, bro? Yeah. And he goes, um, he goes, oh, I wanna, spray the microphone with fart spray <laughs> and, and I'll interview you. Oh. And I go, nah, I don't do that, bro. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's stupid, and bro. I was probably like, please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, nah, I don't do yeah, that, bro. Yeah. And I go, bro, let's come up with something like better, like, you know, something cooler. Mm-hmm. And I and then we kind of came up with the idea that when I was gonna be an idiot to me from behind. Yes. And then, um. I was gonna grab him aggressively because yes. to be honest, when I watch those prank videos, I always mm. say, man, I, I, I can't wait for someone to try that on me one day. Yeah. Cause I'm gonna absolutely ragdoll them. Yeah, yeah. And it's gonna be the funniest video. Yeah, yeah. And then it done, it done a couple, or it done a million. Dude, it was the biggest video for hashtag like my fitness expo. Like, oh. Our video was the biggest video for the whole expo. Yeah, like, beautiful. They did marketing, whatever, our video <laughs> popped and it was like a 10 second video of you just grabbing me and throwing me on the floor. Yeah. And that was how we met. Yeah. Uh, the first time we met. And then we added each other on socials. You were like, oh, Ed dropped me the footage, this, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, I didn't see him since then. And we never really talked ever. And then we get to the island, Survivor. Of Samoa. Of Samoa. Do you want to tell a story of us meeting? Tell me your perspective first, and then I'll tell my perspective. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah so done, done. Uh, we're pretty much, we rock up. Oh, like, so obviously you can't, you don't know who's going to be on the show. Yep. And you rock up and you have to film, but you're not allowed to communicate. You're not allowed to speak to each other. No. Right? So I, we rock up for the first day of filming and um, I walk up and I, we're on this boat and we have to film on this boat. It's a, you know, and, and I look- con- Context is we've been blindfolded. We have no idea where we are. We're in a van sitting like these ones, yeah. like waiting for hours and it's like 4 a.m. and then they take it off. Yeah. And that's where we're at. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I pretty much look over and I'm like, Holy moly, that's the guy I made videos with at the fitness expo and I ragdolled him. And I was like, in my head, I was like, honest, I was like, thank you, Lord. It's God insane. knew, like honest, God knew I yeah. needed one of our boys in this game, lad. Like, and yeah, it just so happened to be winner. And it was Same. just luck, eh? It was just honest, it was just luck. Dude, and then because the game of Survivor is like there's alliances and I, you were already, you already knew that you didn't want people to know we knew each other. Correct. So you weren't making eye contact with me. And you know, I was like, that's fucking Jaden. Yeah. And I'm trying to make eye contact with you. Like, yeah. oh, I want to say hi. And it's like, this guy's fucking avoiding me. Yeah, yeah. I was like, for ages. No, nah, I was actually like, no, nah, I'm not even gonna look at him. I'm not gonna yeah. acknowledge him. I'm not gonna yeah. let him know that I know who he is. And I'm not, I'm just gonna chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as soon as we got in the game, yeah. we, me and this guy just walked over to the side and we're like, <laughs> <laughs> we've done it. <laughs> yes, yes, that was the best. Fuck. Yeah. But uh, yeah, now me and Winner, day one Usos, yep. freaking, uh, became good mates at Fitness Expo, yep. uh, became even better mates in Survivor. Yep. And now I would cl- yep. consider one of, one of my day one usos and one of my real boys. Me and, too, uh, me too. Love you, brother. I'll and, die for you, brother. Uh, yeah, the same here, bros. And uh, yeah, now we just make videos together and this guy makes yeah. videos, I make videos and it's, and uh, yeah. And that's one of my it. close boys. Yes, but yeah, so pretty much for the podcast, yep. uh, I needed, well, really I wanted the first episode to be about me. Yeah, fair <laughs> okay. enough, fair Bro, enough. Cause you know why? I don't like when people do podcasts mm. and they just get mad guests on mm. and they're like, oh bro, tell me about you, tell me about you. And they ask them questions and then yeah. the whole time you're listening to Pascal and you're like, bro, who are you? Yeah, You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was like, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let my audience know yes. my resume, you yes. know, you know, what yes. have I done? Who am yeah. I? Who yeah. is this Jaden Lane guy? Yes. And then uh, pretty much, yeah, winner's gonna pretty much probe me some questions. I've already given him a list. I've already told him exactly yeah. what I want him to ask me. Yeah. And I'm gonna act surprised and I'm gonna be like, wow, that's a great question, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And then we're gonna go from there. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to make it really candid. Yes. He looks unprepared, but really have all the questions here. Correct, he's yes. got all the questions on his phone. Yes. He, so if you do see him looking at his phone, he's not being rude. He's actually no. just trying to read the questions no. that I've told him to ask me. Yes, but I'm gonna probe you further as well. You know, if you might strike a funny story, cause I know you, I've got a lot of stories that people don't know and your fans have, you know, they've seen your videos, they know you're funny, they know you can do cool shit. 
There's deeper stories. Yeah, and I'm like, get them out. Oh. <laughs> That's why I got you here, man. That's why I got the best. I got yes, this guy, man. Yes. All right, right, so- uh, I'll kick it off then. Yeah, stack it up. So, uh, All right. I'll, I'll act surprised, I'll act surprised. I'm just okay, gonna, drink, I'm surprised. Just gonna, I'm gonna drink my oxy shred, All right. and then I'll act surprised, go. All right, done, done. So Jaden Lang, tell me more about where you grew up. Campbelltown, right? Wow, you've done your research. Thank mm. you for the question. Yes, tell me more. So, uh, <laughs> born and raised Southwest Sydney. I was yep. born in Campbelltown Hospital. Yep. Uh, I live for Campbelltown. I die for Campbelltown. I love Campbelltown. It is the best place. I'm so grateful for my childhood. I'm so grateful that I was born and raised there. And I, I had an amazing upbringing. And um, yeah, uh, growing up in Campbelltown definitely shaped me into the person that I am today. Mm, mm. And uh, yeah, I'm just extremely grateful for it. And I, I love Campbelltown. And yeah. Yeah, I'll rip Campbelltown to the day I die, lad. For sure, for sure. And obviously you've taken me to Campbelltown. We've gone and looked for barn me's and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. And you've told me, oh, fucking that area is dodgy, this, that. So obviously it wasn't like the, I guess the cleanest upbringing. What, do you have any stories from those days when you were younger of that neighborhood? Cause I'm, I'm sure it's, it's good now, but I'm sure there maybe were some stories of maybe you know, dodgy things happening. What were the people like? Who were your mates? What was that like? Tell me more. Well, I mean, like it was, uh Campbelltown, there was different gangs okay, and stuff like that. Yep. I don't want to name the, the gang's oh. names or anything like that. But, yeah. um, but pretty much I went to Ayrds High School. That was where I went to in year seven. Okay. And uh, Ayrds High School is actually right across from uh, Reby Juvenile Justice Center, which, I see, I see. Yeah, which is a juvenile. So, yep. And then there was a primary school there as well. So everyone would say, oh, you go to Briar Road, then you go to Ayrds and then you go to Juvie. Really? Like, yeah, that's where you finish. Yeah. Or that's where you graduate. Yeah. Yeah. So, um just being in that environment already was like, you go here, you go here, and then you kind of go here. Yes, which is like, I see. You're already like, oh, I a, see. They've already set you up for failure, like almost that's like, crazy. that's kind of how I feel. So that's um, uh, a Spaniard did an episode out in uh, Aids and he literally showed the school and he, he walked all around Aids and stuff like that. Yep. So like, um, there's a road called St. John's Road. Okay. And I live, and that's like the border between Aids and Bradbury. Okay. And I lived on St. John's Road and I, wow. I, yeah, so I was right next to Ed's and, uh, but I was technically in Bradbury. I see, I see, yep. so right in the heart of it. And in terms of like your mates growing up from like primary school to high school, would you say like half your mates would be involved in the gang violence, half your mates weren't, what did it look like? And where did you sit with all that chaos? Yeah. Far out, bro. You got some bad questions, lad. I got the right, I got the right guy, I'm the man. man. Solid. We've still got so much to cover. You're giving me the baddest I questions. I told you, you gave me fucking all this. I said, this is fucking 10 hours worth, bro. You want me to fit in one hour? Bro, I feel like, I feel like really important. You made me feel important, You man. are important. Thank you, People man. People want to hear this, man. Appreciate this it, man. your origin story. So. Can't believe I have a podcast, man. How cool are you? Dude. So, so um, you definitely, well, uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a shout out to my mum. My mom told me at a very young age, you got you got two decisions. You got to be a leader or yep. you can be a follower. It's up to mm, you. Mm. It's what, it depending, uh, the, if you, you make the decision on what you want to do in your life and you can be a leader or you wow. can be a follower. Wow. You can either follow the crowd and end up wherever they go, mm. or you can be a leader and decide and dictate where you want to go. Wow. And wow, that that was a huge thing for me, man. Yeah. And, that, that re and you know, I'm really fortunate that uh, I wanted to play NRL. That was my dream, just yep. like every every other Islander kid and everything like that. Yep. And um, I wanted to do everything I possibly could yep. to make sure that I reached that goal. So I ate good, I didn't drink, I didn't do drugs, I didn't hang out till late at night, I didn't right. hang out with wrong crowds, I didn't try and bash people, I didn't try and join gangs and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, a lot of my boys around me got caught up in that stuff, which is, which is, which is understandable, bro. Yeah. If you grow up in that environment, you are more likely to be caught up in that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was just real lucky that my mom shaped me to make that decision to be a leader sure. and not for a follower. Sure. And like, and it's funny now because like, you know, in that moment, everyone probably like, oh, why don't you do that? Oh, why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? And then, you know, they look at you and be like, oh, that guy's a bit of a buzzkill. Yeah. And then, you know, I reap the rewards. Yeah. And then they're like, wow, oh, that guy was the man. Yeah. You know, oh, all those times he didn't come party with us and drink with us and yeah. bend with us and do all this. Yeah. And now he's like, wow, look what he's doing now. Yeah. And you know, everything like that. Yeah. I don't think I'm successful or the man or anything like that, but like, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm very blessed and uh, I've mm -hmm. done a lot of things that maybe some of the other boys yeah. had the potential to do, but were unlucky and unfortunate yeah. enough to not be able to do it. Wow. That's amazing that your mom had such good like advice for you and set you up, you know, and she knew that you needed to hear that. Shout out yeah. to his mom. His mom's awesome. Shout out to my mom, man. Um, I have a question on in terms of what you said with, you know, people going down a different path to yourself. And obviously 
with your career and everything, you meet a lot of people, you have a lot of mates from day one and your life has changed so much now. Do you have an attitude towards people in your life? Say my day one brother, he starts to fall off a bit. Do you have a mentality in terms of, fuck, I got to let him go at one point or do you try and drag them up? Because, you know, obviously if your mates are doing drugs, doing gang shit, how do you approach that? Say half your mates are doing all that shit. What, how do you approach that situation? Are you like, fucking, I'm doing my thing. You guys do your thing. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. People come well, and go. So how do you approach um, people well, changing, I guess? I, I don't have a massive group of friends. Mm. I, I could count my boys on both my hands. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? My day one boys. Mm. And um, I don't have a massive group. I've got yep. a small group. Yep. And the boys who are a part of this group, they yep. know me. They know they know me. Yep. You know what I mean? Like I'll go and pick up my boys from West Leagues at, you know, five o'clock in the morning. Right. Because they've been on a bender oh, really? and everything like that. And I'll go yeah. pick them up and I'll rock up and like their whole crew will be like, Jaden, bro, I'm gonna kick on, you ain't gonna come after. <laughs> and my day one also will be yeah, like, yeah, nah, yeah. bro, he doesn't do that stuff. Wow. No, nah, no, nah, he doesn't do that stuff. Wow. He's gonna pick me up. And yeah. then you know what I mean? And then, like all my boys just respect me and they understand the person that I am and they knew mm. what I'm about and what I'm not about. Mm. Now, bro, we can get into like, you know, you are who you surround yourself with, yes, bro. You know yes. what I mean? Like yep. if you hang around with clowns, it's very likely you're going yep. to be a clown yourself. Yes. Yes. Now, um, yeah, I'm very, I, I was very, very particular with who I choose as my mates and who I invested my time sure. and my friendship and everything sure. like that. Um, I take a lot of pride in loyalty yep. and respect and I definitely am loyal and respectful to my yes. boys just as they are to me. Yes, can confirm this is true. Then in terms of like your mates, you know, um, some of them going the wrong way, while you were in Campbelltown, you know, for most boys, young boys out there, if their mates do something, drugs, whatever, they, they usually steer with them, right? So did you have any role models or people you look up to? Like how did out of everyone there, you chose to take the, you know, full send with your career route and get your rugby contract? Was there anyone you looked up to or it just came from within from yourself from day one? Oh, so um, growing up, my uh, my uncle played NRL. Oh, really? His name's Asiri Lang. Oh, yes, uh, yes, he played for uh, Western Suburb Magpies yep. before they had uh, become West Tigers. And then he also played for Melbourne Storm and he won the grand final in 1999, I'm pretty sure. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, he, he was like the man. Yeah. And he grew yeah. up in Campbelltown as well. He grew, yeah. He's a Claymore boy, grew up in Claymore and, um, you know, went through all the programs, played NRL, pretty much lived the the Islander dream. Yeah. You yeah. know, it did it all. And um, I, I, I saw the way that my family glorified and loved my uncle. Mm. Like he was literally like the hero. He was a yeah, hero, like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, so like um, at all of my family's house, we'll have like like a little wall and it's like Muriel, um, Muriel's, uh, Muriel, I'm, what's the word, lad? Uh, Muriel. Muriel? Muriel, Muriel's. <laughs> Muriel? <laughs> Cereal? The murals? Oh, anyway, they'll have that. frames and photos yeah, of him yeah, yeah. all over the wall, bro. Yeah, Even yeah, when I've I went to Fiji, yeah. Bro, like I went to all the houses in the village, lad, yeah, and yeah. they've all just got photos of my uncle in the yeah. in the village, and, that, and I was yeah. like, bro, I was like, like I would absolutely like love for my family to look at me yes. like that, like, like the way I that see. my family loved and glorified my uncle. Yeah, I would love to to be in that same position. Yeah, yeah. and I think that g'd me up so hard because so cool. I was just like, bros, like. As much as I want to do this for myself, I also yep. want to be. I want to do this for my family, the people around me, yeah. and I want to be the best that I can be. And my family look at me and go and be proud. Hey, sure, you know what I mean? Sure. Like you, you want your family to be proud of you, and I feel like that's that's that should be every um, young person's dream yeah. is for their yeah. family and their parents to be proud of them yeah. after everything that they've done for them. The best way that you can repay them is making them proud yes. of what you've become and what you've done yes. in this life. Yes, um, for sure. So uh, yeah, definitely my uncle was a, was a huge pioneer yeah. in uh, motivating me and uh, guiding me in the right yeah. direction. Eh? And yeah, like I said, because I wanted to play rugby, it, it kept me away from all the other That's bullshit amazing. that yeah. um, our youth tend yeah. to get into. That's sick, so was your uncle. Yeah, one good thing about Jaden is that he's very, very family oriented. Like seeing his family who have trips booked, he's bringing his mom up, seeing his dad. It's always been a constant in his life and something I respect a lot about you. Um, bring it back to Campbelltown. I'm sure there's a lot of Campbelltown, you know, viewers. <laughs> How do you see Campbelltown right now? Like obviously the city's changed a lot. Um, it was your like home. Do you see it as like a, oh, like 
that's my home one day I'm going to go back there or do you feel like I'm gone now how, how do you feel about yeah Campbelltown in general uh Campbelltown is my home always will be my home every yep. time I go back I feel at home Man. and I like when I go to Campbelltown I'm always like bro that's the best place to eat you know oh that's yeah, the good place yeah, oh, I know so exactly bad. where to go over there oh if you want to go shops I know where all the shops are you know yeah, everything yeah. like that all my oh, one of my boys lives over there oh we grew up over here we used to go to that park we used to play footy down there yeah, like yeah, yeah, right, yeah Campbelltown will always be my home and um I have, I, I don't really have any desire to want to move back there. Yep. Um, Campbelltown has changed um, a lot. I see. Uh, so uh, my family, well, I still have a bunch of family that still live there and still growing up there and everything like that. Yep. But it's changed a bunch yeah. since I grew up there. So when I grew up in Campbelltown, it was, mm. uh, it was like, everything was like footy, you know? Everyone wanted to play footy. Mm. The, the junior rugby league teams mm. in the area used to have first division, second division, third division, yep. and they had so many teams for every age group. Yep. Now, I'm pretty sure some teams struggle to get like one team together for an age group. Really? Just because, you know, this generation has just changed, bro. No one yeah. really wants to play footy anymore. Yeah. Everyone's caught up and they want to work or they want to do this and want to do that. And the youth or maybe want to be gamers and, and different stuff like that, you know? And- um. Yeah, it's just real different. Yeah. Uh, but but um, there's also like the heavy influence of people wanting to be gangsters and tough see, guys, and, see, you know. Oh, but it makes me laugh because we've got we've got suburbs <laughs> in Campbelltown, so like okay, there'll be like okay. you know, Claymore and you know uh, Bradbury, Rose Meadow, okay, and stuff okay. like that. And people from different suburbs within Campbelltown, yeah, kind of want to fight each other. And, oh, really? Yeah. And, it's so strange, bro. It's I so see. strange to me. Like that was around when I was in high school and it was like the Aids boys would want to fight the Rose Meadow boys or something like that. Yeah. So it's it's not something that's brand new, but mm. it's just gotten worse because people are dying now and you know, mm. you know people, knives oh, are worse. coming okay, out and all that kind good. of stuff. Yeah, that's it's just, good. it's really, it's then, really ugly. In terms of like your school then going like high school, you know, while all this is happening outside the violence and whatnot, what were you like in school? Were you like head down studying or were you like the class clown? Cause obviously you're funny, you're cracking jokes all day. What was young Jaden like? Oh, good question, man. You're the man, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How good to have a podcast that I could do that. I love that. And uh, so yeah, Jaden Lang at school, man. Mm. Unfortunately, <laughs> I was a clown at school. Really? I was an idiot. Yeah. yeah. I, I reckon I reckon everyone who sees my stuff now and sees mm. my videos now, they're honest now. I reckon they'll be like, that guy was a girl at school. Really? I reckon, eh? Because um I didn't take school seriously. Mm. I, I but it's it's about my perspective. That's what mm. it was. When I was young, I saw school as a place where I just rock up and I have to go here. I see. It. And um, yeah, I have to go here. I have to learn that I have to try and learn stuff that I have no desire to learn about. Yeah. And um, really it was just a place where I had to go. Yeah. Whereas now my perspective and, and after obviously finishing mm. school, mm. I'm just like, why wouldn't I try to absolutely learn everything that I possibly could? Really? So wh why wouldn't you? Mm, mm, mm. You, you have to go to this place where they teach you things and you can get smarter. Mm. Like, bro, knowledge is power. Like, wow. the smarter you are, yeah. the, the more people that you can speak to, the more the yep. more things you know, the more intelligent you are, the more, uh, the more prepared you are for anything in the world. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. bro, like, like going to school and not taking taking that opportunity to learn and become smarter mm. and just fart assing around and being an idiot at school yeah. makes absolutely no sense to me now. And Bro. it's so crazy that I did that. Like it, it blows my mind that I went to school and I didn't, I, I, you know, they pull out worksheets and I didn't want to do worksheets. I didn't yeah. bring my, I didn't bring my school pens yeah. to school. Yeah. I didn't, you know, uh, I just took school as a joke and it just, and what's made it worse now is that now that I've I've traveled to different countries and I've gone and I've, mm. I've experienced the other the rest of the world, and bro, in some countries going to school is a luxury. Yes, it is, bro. Like in some countries, like there's kids, their dream is mm. to go to school. Mm. Like they they they're saving their pennies so that they can get they can go to school. Yeah, and I had the luxury of being able to go to a school and learn as much as I as much as I wanted. Yeah, and I just. I mean, completely didn't utilize that to the best of my ability. That's very interesting to me because you have like the uh, the typical, um, I guess, life of someone with an entrepreneurial like 
income, right? Like you make your money through other things. And usually the guys who have businesses online, social media guys will be like, you know, fuck uni, fuck school. It's a scam. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, all, yeah. all those voices in today's social media in terms of hustling, they yeah. all say fuck school. But you being in that position of making money and making a career, that is nothing to do with an education or a degree. You're saying to focus on school. Oh, uh, I find that interesting. Man, and I, uh, yeah, bro, to be honest, I wish I just like, like everything that I mm. like, uh, like go into the uh, the pyramids in Egypt and stuff like yeah. that. And I'm, I'm learning about the history and I'm just like so infatuated with it. I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. And yeah, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. wait a minute. We had to learn about this stuff in school. And I was just like, nah. You actually nah. know a lot about, like when I first met you, obviously like I went to uni, right? I have a completely separate, I, I'm a uni boy, like ATAR, Asian kid, like parents like fucking get, get a high ATAR and go to uni and do engineering. So I like already am like, education is important. But then when I met you, like you told me you didn't go to school and stuff. I completely thought you'd be like, when I first met you, like, you know, not in tune with stuff, you're a fucking heavy cunt, like playing, <laughs> playing rugby. This dude probably is like clueless, but you know so much about just the most random shit. And even the way your brain works, I actually find it very interesting because, so like people who study STEM, like engineering, sciences, whatever, they're very logical. And usually I guess, I mean, I'm gonna sound like stereotyping, <laughs> stereotyping now, but like, you know, a lot of guys who didn't do that, or you know other careers or say did sports or trades or whatever, they wouldn't have that logical mind, but Jaden has always had it. And since I met you, I was very amazed. Like you told me you didn't go uni, like you weren't big on that, but the way your brain works and even you, you were telling me about your bizzo, um, you were telling me about your printing business mm. and just the way he approaches businesses, even today's like climate, how big he is now, all his brand deals, like your brain is like someone who fucking studied commerce. You know what I mean? Oh, I swear to God. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm curious now if you can go back in time, you're going to study something. Mm. You don't have followers. You just pure study and you can get to any degree. What degree are you doing at uni? Oh man, I think business is the way to go. Eh? Really? Like honest bro. Mm. Like even when I first got into business, I, like I never ever thought that starting my own business was even a possibility. Like I didn't even think that that was possible. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. I'd had no desire to business. When I used to hear people like, oh, I'm gonna get study business. I used to always think like, why? <laughs> What, what are you studying that for? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But growing up, I always thought I need to get a good job mm -hmm. and make the most amount of money that I can yep. doing a job that is easy. Yeah. And I was like, that's the dream. Tell them about um, your first job and how you realized very early on in your life that you never want to work a job ever again. <laughs> so shout out to high school and, and the work experience, man, because that humbled me and made me understand that I'm not cut out for that kind of work. Mm. So in construction, right? Uh, you have to do work experience. And I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's like one week or two weeks or something. I'm pretty, maybe it's two weeks, but for two weeks straight, you have to go to uh, somewhere that does construction. And we'll, it, I had a joinery. So we built shelves and cupboards and all that kind of stuff, right? And I rocked up on the first day. <laughs> he made me screw runners into drawers Oh yeah, bro, yeah. for like four hours straight. I reckon it was like four <laughs> hours, bro. And I'm just screwing runners in, bro, with, yeah. a, with a with a drill and just de 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 and Same putting thing. them on. And and uh, yeah, and like in my head, I was like uh, therapeutic, you know, <laughs> <laughs> therapeutic. This is therapy. Just, this is therapy. Yeah, just and I'm just like, you know, in my own thoughts yeah. and de de. Yeah. And then the second day, I rocked up. All the blokes that rocked up to work, they've all got like cigarettes mm. and, and V's. <laughs> and they're just like the most unhealthiest looking people you've ever yeah, seen yeah. in your life. And they're just like <laughs> drinking V's and they're yeah. like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. And I was kind of like, oh, yeah, I don't know if I really want to look or be like those kind of guys, you know what I mean? And then uh, <laughs> the boss that I was doing the work experience at, he was also like talking like, Talking to me like I was a bit of a gronk, like he's mm, talking to me mm, like I was a little shit, mm. which I was a little shit, yeah. which I kind of understand, but you know, I, I just don't really like when people are telling me what to do or treat me like a gronk. Yeah, yeah. And um, I uh, I just had enough, bro. I was just like, like, you know, bro, literally just how old drilling runners. How old were you? Oh man, what, I think it's like seven, no, 17, 16. So it would have been, like, been like year 11 or year 10. Yeah, it was yeah. one of those years. And um, bro, I just, <laughs> after the second day, I was like, yeah, I'm not going back, stuff that. I'm not going back. <laughs> you quit. Bro, I, just, um, I didn't go back. I, I think we went on smoker and I just didn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I just went on- Mid-shift mid quit. <laughs> bro, I went I on smoker, I just went to the train station and yeah, caught train yeah. home and I was like, I'm not doing that. I actually hate that. Like that's yeah. the worst thing ever. Yeah. And I realized at that, at that moment, I was like, all right, I, don't, I can't do a job yeah. 
that I absolutely dread and hate. Wow. So I need to focus on something that I enjoy and try and make money doing that. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's when I made the decision to try and get into like personal training and I done my personal training degree see, and everything like that. Yeah, I got I my cert three and four in fitness. And um, there was another moment that I that I that I, like I didn't like as well because I was a personal trainer, I became yep. a personal trainer. And uh, there was another moment that was like really like significant uh, for me was uh, I used to do uh, like we used to stack boxes and fill up pallets and then put the boxes into the back of a truck in a in an ice cream freezer. Mm. So pretty much loading ice cream boxes yeah, yeah. and loading pallets and then they'd take them in. You know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, bro, it was me and probably like. I reckon there's like eight other Islander boys, yeah. right? And all like rugby boys, you know, yeah. just the boys, you know? And uh, we used to work hard, man. Yeah. And we used to like go above and beyond like da, da, da. Yeah. We used to like take pride in that. We were good workers, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, and we, were, and then yeah. we loved it. The, the workplace loved it and everything like that. And then I remember one day we had this meeting before our, our shift. Yeah. And the meeting was these guys and they were like, um, we need to maximize the amount of pallets that we're doing. We need to work faster. We yeah. need to work harder. Yeah. And I'm gonna come in there today and I'm gonna like observe what you guys are doing yeah. and see how we can make this more efficient and make yeah. you make you guys more money. Yeah. That's yeah. that's kind yeah. of how they were pitching it. Yeah. So we went in, we done our thing, bah, 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 smashing all the boxes, everything like that. And while we're smashing it and I'm sweating, we're working hard, and I look over at the the guy, and it was probably like, uh five five or six like older white gentlemen <laughs> with like notepads and <laughs> a pen yeah, yeah. and they're just watching us slave away bro really and i was like these guys are higher up than us okay yeah. they get paid more than us mm. we're over here slaving away breaking our backs working mm. so freaking hard yeah these guys are watching us and we're working so hard and we get paid less than them. Mm. And I was like, this isn't right, eh? <laughs> I was yeah. like, I actually hate this. Oh, I hate no. being on this side. I want to be over there. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to be on that side where yeah. I'm looking over and going, yeah, keep it up boys, you know, whatever. Like, I, well, I mean, not exactly that I want to be that guy, but I want to be in the role where you get paid more to yeah. do less. Yeah. You know, so um, that was another moment that I was like- There you go. Nah, this is not right here. I need to do something else. I need to do something else. Yeah, Like yeah. I cannot do this. Like That's this is so not funny. what yeah, my yeah, life is, I you know. I, yeah, I just knew straight away. Yeah, so you realize early on in terms of your career, then we'll bring it back to like family as well. Like you've spoken about your mom and her, you know, being there for you with the advice and everything. Um, what was the upbringing like in your childhood? Like describe to me your, your just house at home, siblings. What was the vibe in the house like? Yep. Oh man, I'm so blessed. Eh? So blessed with my mum and my dad and my brother. Mm. I'm just so blessed, man. I'm so grateful for my family. Yep. Um, I'm so grateful for my upbringing, uh, my cultures. Mm. Uh, my dad's Samoan in Fiji and my mom's Chilean. Yep. You know, such a rich and uh, amazing cultures. And I got to, I got a little bit of, you know, all three of them. Um, uh, we grew up in Macquarie Fields, which is in Campbelltown. And um, yeah, man, my dad is the hardest worker you'll ever meet. Like my dad still to this day works seven days a week. Mm. Well, actually I think he does six days now because my dad's a bus driver and they told him, like his, his overtime is his normal shifts now. <laughs> and, and whenever he has like, like he, he'll load up all of his sick leave and they'll be like, Rodney, you've got to stop. Like you, yeah. you need to take two yeah. weeks off. Yeah. Like, how, old is he? how old is he again? Oh, I think he's like 55, 56, yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah, he's, and, and he also does crazy cycles. Like tell him about his like- Yeah, he's a real fitness dude. Like yeah. he, he loves training. And that was another thing that, you know, motivated me and made me want to go to the gym mm. is that my dad was, my dad's six foot two and he played basketball. So he had that oh, like really? American like swag, at least wear the basketball yeah, shorts yeah, and nice, the Jordans nice. and the basketball yeah, cigarettes yeah, and that. Yeah. My dad was bold as well. So he was like, you know, a little bit of Michael Jordan yeah, lookalike, yeah, you know, yeah. Shaquille O'Neal, you know? <laughs> and um, and when my dad used to drop me off at school, yep. he will drop me off and uh, I remember I used to walk in with my dad and I'll sit down on my chair and all my mates at school would be like, whoa, your dad's massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I used to just be like, Fucking know if that's my dad. Like, who who you are know? you closer to, mum or dad? Oh man, I'm close to both. Eh? Mm -hmm. I, I, I definitely have a different type of relationship with both, yep. but I'm very close with both. Yep. And then, um, so that like my, yeah, my dad is the hardest worker ever. And he pretty much, you know, taught me like 
my work ethic yes. and, and what is acceptable in terms of what is hard work and what is not hard work. And sure. you know what I mean? For someone who works seven days a week, how could I think that working Monday to Friday was enough? Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like like weekends was not a thing to me because mm-hmm. that's that was an opportunity to work. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. my dad just worked seven days a week. My um my mom also worked at the same time because mm-hmm. we, we grew up in the uh, housing commission in Macquarie Fields. Oh really? Yeah, we, that's what that was like uh where I grew up, did primary school and everything like that. Yeah. And um, so my mom worked as well. My dad worked, but my dad worked seven days a week. Yeah. My mom also looked after us. And my mom is just the most kind, loving, cheerful, like sh- she puts everyone before herself. She's the most nurturing, loving yeah. mother I could ever ask for. Yeah. And she's like, honestly so amazing. I'm so blessed. She is so cheerful. Every oh, time I've seen her, man. she's been in the best mood. Yeah. Yeah. Like she's awesome. Always smiling so much. It's yeah. amazing. And so I definitely think that that's where I got my my outgoing personality, my yeah. uh, like my humor. Uh, and yeah, so I, I definitely picked up a lot of amazing, great traits and qualities from my mom. Yeah, I yeah. picked up a lot of great, amazing traits and qualities from my dad. Yeah. And then I put them all together and I just became this mega super. Sick cunt. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, man. <laughs> Sick cunt. And in terms of your family then, you described such a beautiful upbringing. Would you change anything in terms of how you were raised for your own kids? Uh, well, I'm extremely grateful that we grew up in housing commission and grew up a little bit less fortunate. Well, was it very like housing commission? Was it full like crackhead junkie action or was it like still still kind of nice? Like, well, Actually, no, we definitely grew up in the nicer housing okay, commission okay, part okay. of where like, like there's a place uh, right in front. <laughs> I don't want to throw anyone's house under the bus. <laughs> the bus you know, be like, that place was disgusting. <laughs> but like, there was, <laughs> so the main part of a growth field. They're gonna be watching this podcast <laughs> from that house. <laughs> <laughs> And they're gonna be watching and be like, I hate this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so no, shout out to McCoy Fields, man. Yeah, I love McCoy Fields, man. But pretty much the main part of McCoy Fields and then right in front <laughs> of that, yeah, huh? yeah. that's where like, that's where my grandma, oh, that's really? where my grandma's house was. And I that see, was a lot more rougher. Mm, but we yeah. were like to the right, you know, down there a little bit and it wasn't as bad. It was, yeah, it was, yeah. it was a, bit, a lot better. Yeah. Now, um, like bro, like I said, I love my childhood. I'm so grateful for everything. Yeah. However, we were less fortunate. You know what I mean? Like, mm. uh, you know, we had our nights where you got to go through the cupboard and you got to eat cans of beans and you know, you, oh, really? you bake beans, you have eggs or you have breakfast for dinner or you yeah, know, like yeah, just little yeah. stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, we never went starving or anything like that, but yeah, we, grew yeah. up, we definitely grew up less fortunate. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And I don't want to make you out like, oh man, I grew up in the toughest way. <laughs> yeah. ever. No, I didn't bro. Yeah, yeah. I had, I, I yeah. My, my mum always made sure that we ate yep. and we were satisfied and we were comfortable and everything like that. Yep. I, I had an amazing childhood. That's amazing. Now, there are some people who grew up much more fortunate. Mm. You know, like kids yes. these days, mate, they're driving around the $1,500 scooters. Yep. Bro, $1,500 for those scooters, lad. And these guys, this is every kid has one. <laughs> and I was like, bro, yeah. $1,500 on like a kid. Yeah, like, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, I definitely, We'll try to like. I want my kids to to want to do whatever they want to do in life, and they yeah. have to work for it. And I yeah. want them to know that, you know, my success is not going to. It's not your success. Yeah. If you want to be successful, you got to do it yourself. Yeah. You know, I said to you today. You know, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink. Yeah. And I want my my son to be the thirstiest horse that ever lived. <laughs> <laughs> You said sun, you said sun instantly. So oh. I'm curious now, are you leaning towards sun or are you like a- oh, I can't Nah, either or, either or. I always say sun, bro. I, don't, I always say sun. Yeah, okay, My okay. missus is always like, you keep saying sun, but I was like, nah, nah, nah. I reckon. You got a missus? <laughs> shout out to my missus, man. Yeah. <laughs> you got a missus, man. Nah, shout out to my missus, man. But um, Do I ask about the missus? Let me check. I'm asking about the missus. It's not on there, bro. That's no, the next episode. Uh, next episode, sorry, bro. <laughs> next topic, skip the missus. Rugby league. Rugby tell league, me, yeah. Tell me about, okay, focus. I wanna, I feel like people wanna hear about your mindset as well because people see your videos, you're funny, you make good content, you're popping, whatever, but people don't see how hard he works. And like, obviously content creation is very like a fun thing. You know, people think you just sit back and I'm gonna film these funny things. It's gonna go, oh, it's gonna go viral. But really there's a lot more that goes behind every video. And I'm telling you, I've filmed with heaps of people. When you film with Jaden, he's like, 
he does not post shit videos and you've seen it and he has such a, it's like work to him, even though it's a funny piece of work, like it's, it's content, it's like comedy. Mm. Um, how do you approach that? And do you think that work ethic you have today in your content stems from you and rugby? Yeah. So, oh man, I am so grateful that I grew up playing rugby league, mm. uh, rugby league mm. and rugby union. Yep. Because so many of the skills and qualities that I learned from rugby league literally carried over so well wow. to the rest of my life, bro. Yep. Like when you play rugby league, right? You need to go out there and you need to know teamwork, mm. which is great for, you know, teamwork in, in life, you know, every day mm. of life. Um, you need to learn dedication, um, yeah. being punctual. Uh, you need to understand um, uh, commitment. You need to, um, what's the other uh, the other term? Um, discipline. Mm. Discipline is a huge thing. You will not be a great rugby league player if you do not have discipline. To eat the right foods, to get the right training sessions in, to mm. do the rehab, to do the recovery, to do uh, to watch footage so that you can analyze and understand what is like what what would help me, what wouldn't help me, everything like that. Mm. So there's so many great things that I learned from rugby league that just literally carried over so well into mm. everyday life. Mm. Now, uh, rugby league, oh man, it, it it also opened so many doors for me, man. Like mm. it uh. It definitely took took me to on a whole nother level. Mm. Like because of rugby league, I got to um, make heaps of friends. Yeah, you know, I, I've got mates all over the world because of, of, of because of the rugby. Mm. Um, it allowed me to gain a higher education. I got a full mm. rugby scholarship in America. Mm. I got amazing. to travel because of rugby. Um, in one year, I'd done like eight different countries playing rugby in different countries. That's and amazing. Tell, tell us about when you got that contract initially, because obviously you said that you wanted to be a rugby player for most of your life growing up. Yep. So you're a child, like this is like your your North Star, your dream. Yeah, so yeah, how yeah. did you feel when you got that contract in front of you? You go into America. Was that like the pinnacle of your life at that point? Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool, bro. Yeah. Um, so I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd played rugby league. I'd, I got my shoulder injured and, and I tore my rotator cuff and oh. I was with Tigers. So I, I did juniors with um, Western Suburb Magpies and then we went to like West Tigers and, and stuff like that. And then I tore my rotator cuff so I wasn't able to be a part of the, the junior development anymore. Yep. And then I took like a year off and then my my rugby coach, his name's Marcus uh, Volavola, which is one of my close, one of my brothers, I will say. And um, he he had gotten married in America and started a new life with his wife over in America. And uh, he became the rugby coach of a team called Kansas City Blues. Okay. And um, so he pretty much gave me the opportunity and said, do you wanna come and play for my men's rugby team over in America? We'll fly you out, we'll give you accommodation, we'll give you a car, we'll give you a gym membership, we'll look after you. You just gotta come over for three months yep. and play rugby. That's amazing. And I was like, holy moly, the, like, my dream is to like, Play, be a professional rugby player. Yeah, yeah. And like, this is a cool opportunity to play rugby in another country. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, sweet, send it, let's do it. Yeah. So I did it, went over, went over for three months. Three months then turned into three years because I'd- uh, That's a long time. Oh man. man. So long. So we played a game against uh, Palmer University, okay, which was a chiropractic college. So all the guys that were on that rugby team, they were chiropractors mm. and, um, I had like, I'd done really well at that game. Like, you know, I played pretty good. And then after the game, we went to the pub to have our, our social after. And I went up, gave my ID and he goes, you're not 21, you're 20. And I go, yeah. yeah. And he goes, drinking age here in America is 21 years right. old. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20, 21, like, yeah. man, I've been working security since I was 18 years old. I've been throwing out the drunk dudes, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. for my whole, like for the past three years, you know, yeah, like, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And um, I can't believe that I can't come in for a beer. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the word got around and they were like, wait a minute, you're telling me you're 20 years old and you got four years of college rugby eligibility. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it, bro. Yeah. I got an offer from like a, a university in Minnesota. Yeah. I got an offer from Lindenwood University, which is wow. in, St. Louis and yep. I got offered from a university called Davenport University University in Michigan. Heaps. Yeah. Have you seen um what's that movie uh uh Michael Orr? No, uh, I haven't seen it. Oh, what's it? No, nah, it's called The Blind Side. No, nah, I haven't. It's about it. this American football player and pretty much okay. like he's like he gets like all of these colleges that want him to, to go to their college yeah. and yeah. that's kind of how I felt. 
Yeah. So anyone who's watched Blindside, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. But um, that's how I feel is because yeah. like I had to go do uh, college visits mm. at these colleges and they would show me around and they'd be like, so this is where you train. This is where the yeah. rugby team is. You know, yeah. you're going to meet all the rugby guys and, yeah. and then they'd take you out to party and then you'd have a night out with all the boys and I they'd see, show I you see. what the party life was I at see. college and I stuff see. like that. And all of that was like real cool. And I did all that. Yeah. And I ended up making the decision to go to Davenport University. Yeah. Straight after Davenport University, I did one year of college, played college rugby. Mm. I then got offered to play for the Chilean national team. Mm. And uh, I lived in South America, in Chile for three mm. months. And within that three months, that was the year where I'd done Uruguay, Brazil, Canada, USA, wow. um, Ch well, Chile, Uruguay, mm. Canada, Brazil. I'm trying to think if there's any other ones. But then I also done China that year. Yeah. And America, uh, I don't know. Heaps but of I, countries. Yeah, I've done, I've done a bunch, yeah. And you like that lifestyle at that point in your life, like flying around, did you miss home? It How was a dream, feel? bro. It was a dream. Bros, yeah. I was representing my mother's heritage, representing yeah. like her country. Yeah. And all of my family in Chile were like, like they don't even speak English, but they were full getting around me. They were just like, <laughs> this guy plays for the Selección de Chile and all this stuff. And then, yeah. you know, all my, all my Chilean family who like never really, were in liked life. the, or like they didn't really support or they weren't really like into rugby. Yeah, yeah. But then as soon as I was playing for the Chilean national that's rugby mad. team, they were like, that's my cousin, you know, you know what I mean? And it was yeah, just like yeah. so yeah. cool because yeah, yeah, I'd kind of like gained respect yeah. for my Chilean side. And and um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually the first ever guy to play for the, the Chilean national rugby league team and the Chilean rugby union team. Oh, really? So I've played for both. Wow. And yeah. um, so that was cool. And then after that, I got offered a rugby, a pro rugby contract to yep. play for Glendale Raptors, which yep. is in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. And um, yeah, I lived there for a year. Yeah. And, and then, uh, yeah, I pretty much played rugby for a year and then came back to Australia. Yep. And uh, the plan was to go play for France. Oh, wow. Go yep. play in France. My manager had gotten me a gig over there. Yeah. And I broke my leg. Fuck, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, broke my leg. And, and just quickly on the rugby thing, what was the money like? During that time. Nah, it wasn't all that. Eh? I used to get 400 US dollars a week. A week? Yeah, 400 really? US dollars a week. Yeah, yeah but okay. we had catering, we had gym. I see, We I had see. Uh, free travel, so like see, flights, yeah. accommodation. So every weekend we'd be in a new place in America. Yeah, yeah You know yeah. what I mean? One weekend we'd be over here, one weekend over here, one weekend over here. Yeah. So, and then like rent, we had our housing all done. Like, so yeah, okay. So, so like, just, you get to save that 400 basically. Well, pretty much, yeah, I did save that 400 US. Yeah, because, and then like, yeah, well, because, our food was supplied to it. We had catering. We had this like literal like chef that would make really? our breakfast. Yep. And then lunch, we'd just get whatever, you know, yep. go eat over here, whatever. And then uh, after training at nighttime, then we'd eat again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. And, and then, um, I was gonna ask, because I, I think your fans would like this, in terms of training, like going from locally playing and to America level training and diet, was it a complete like different ballpark? Like, fuck, the training's crazy. Hmm. The food is so hard on me. Was oh, it like that? Oh man. 100%. So yeah. going from like, like, so junior footy, you train twice a week. Tuesday, I Thursdays, see. you know, you train twice a week. Yep. Um, you get up to like uh, junior development for like Tigers or like junior development. Yeah. You still probably train two, three times a week, maybe mm. three, maybe mm. three times a week. Mm. Um, then I went to college rugby. Yep. Now, obviously the levels are very different, but like college rugby is not the highest level. I see. Because America is still not really that big on rugby yeah. rugby union. Yeah. So we trained, uh, we actually trained, I think it was like, nah, I think we trained every day actually. I think mm. we did five days mm. Mm. for college. So Monday mm. to Friday we trained, mm. not every day was crazy intense, but we we trained five days. I see. I see. Um, especially because we're on a scholarship. Well, diet was never something that I was like, really? I never really prioritized. Even still today, yeah, you, right, I understand okay. me, the importance of diet. Let but me I, tell them, okay, every time we go Macca's, it will literally be any time of day, we'll just come from dinner, we'll go Macca's, <laughs> like, oh, I might get a quick snack, yeah, done. He will go first and it'll just be like triple cheeseburger, double quarter pounder. And I'm like about to order next. So I'm like about to speak like and say my order, <laughs> but then he doesn't stop. He goes, yeah, quarter pounder and then 10 chicken nuggets and then two McClurries and then three soft serves and he will keep going. And every time we go, even if you've eaten, you'd spend like 60, 70 bucks after it was at Macca's and pump all of it. Yeah. And you, you can't help yourself. You can't stop. Yeah, man. It's, that That's my only weakness, man. I can say no to drugs. I can say no to alcohol. <laughs> I can say no to absolutely everything and anything. And my discipline is so 
locked in. Dude, you love fast but food. But as soon as someone's like, bro, I was keen for a feed, lad. Well, why do you love fast food? Sidetracking a bit, but like, do you have it heaps growing up? You know, why Why do you love Macca's so much? I love it too, but it's interesting because usually there's patterns. Yeah, know? no, I can, I can tell you because oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm very self-aware, bro. <laughs> I'm very self-aware. Why are you so fucking fat, man? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry to all the Islanders out there, but it's yeah. because I'm Islander. Really? <laughs> bro. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, bro, we are brought up mm. that any type of social gathering, <laughs> we have to eat. Yeah. <laughs> like we yeah. have to, like it's, that's what we do. Yeah. All right. We like Islanders love food. You know mm. what I mean? Our food is not exactly the healthiest options. You know what I mean? Like, that's okay. bro, like, if you went to an island of barbecue, it's all meat, mm. right? It's all like coconut cream and, and potatoes and carbs. And it's literally just straight carbs and straight yeah. um, meat, you know, yeah, yeah. right? And then our salad is potato salad. <laughs> our salad is pasta salad. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm like, yeah. There's no greens, lad. You know what I'm saying? There's no lettuce. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Just spring but onions on top. Of this. Yeah. Oh, that's that's it. That's yeah, that. Yeah. You may see that green. You might see the the beetroot in the see, in the uh, potato salad. Yeah. Shout out to the Cook Islanders. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like, bro, we just, like we just all and and another thing is we don't eat until we're satisfied. We eat until we can't breathe. Always, every meal, eh? Every meal, bro. Yeah. It's just something that we do, bro. Yeah. You know, if someone comes over, like say one of the aunties, cousins or something that come over, mm. first thing we do is go cup of tea, cup of tea, cup of tea, mm. get biscuits or go order food and go do prepare this. We're gonna yeah. eat, we're gonna eat now. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's just yeah. something that's been embedded within us for years and years. Yeah. And when it's birthdays, we eat hard out. Yeah, when people yeah. come over, we eat hard yeah, out. Yeah. And it's just, Bro, something that we've been brought up with yeah. and we constantly do. And unfortunately, it's it's a it's a habit that I've picked up. <laughs> yeah. And my love for food. Yeah. And it's it's been real like <laughs> even like like my dad is my dad's one of those lucky islanders that's blessed in terms of genetics. Oh, really? My dad can eat junk food every day and he's still solid as veins wow. in his arms, just yeah, yeah, yeah. on stuff, bro. Yeah, yeah. And um so my dad, like he loves getting good deals. Like he's always chasing <laughs> the good deals, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like my dad's the guy that like, we'll be driving yep. and then McDonald's will have this ad and it'll be like two for one. Yeah, yeah, and my dad will be like, oh, we have to. We're gonna, oh, it's two for one, it's two for one. Yeah, and I'll yeah. just be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 two for one, two for yeah, one, that's a good deal. I you know see. what I mean? My dad would love going to the uh, the like Chinese buffets. Yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, he's, he's 11. So. <laughs> You know, uh, yeah. so he's, he's half he's price, saying, you know. Shut, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm 14. <laughs> you know? yeah. But like, you know, my dad loved good deals, bro. Yeah. So we go to the Chinese buffet and then my dad would like pump five plates and my dad wow. would be like, yeah, five plates. <laughs> so, so, you only had two plates. Yeah. Come on, man. You got to get my my, oh, yeah. my money's worth, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I would always be like, no, 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 I got you, dad. I'll eat more, yeah. I'll eat more, dad. You that know what I mean? so cute. And it, <laughs> So well, not, not really, man. How <laughs> fat, man. I think it's an ethnic thing. Oh, I, I agree. An and you know thing. what? I don't think it's just because I'm Islander, but I think a lot of other ethnic backgrounds yeah, will thing. will have the same thing. I reckon Italians, bro. Dude, uh, Italians, yeah, Italians will probably have the same thing. You know, Italians. the, the nonas. You know, yes, bro. Like I reckon Asians as well. Asians like, as well. Arabs as well. It's feasting. It's, yeah. all, it's almost like a flex. Like you come over to my house. Look how much food we have. Yeah, like, it really eat, is. Eat more, eat more, and it's rude if you don't eat. Hey, bro. Yeah, but I think yeah. maybe Islanders eat to the point where you you said that like you can't breathe anymore. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think that's where we go wrong. That, and that, then that's, after we eat to the <laughs> we point we it out. after we eat to the point we can't breathe, mm. right? We're like, all right, what's for dessert? It's <laughs> <laughs> just like, bruh, <laughs> like, <"Bruh, laughs> we, we've just eaten four pigs, you know? <laughs> right. You know, Every, four pigs had to die for this gathering. Bro, he, and will, <laughs> he will get like four or five burgers from Macca's and he will always still get two or four soft serves afterwards. And I was like, is that necessary? You get it every time, man. Yeah. Well, that's all right. That's enough fat shaming. <laughs> I'll change the topic. You know what? A lot of other people out there will relate to me. Yes, you exactly. Know? And exactly. it's something I'm working on. But it is, it is. There will be a time where I overcome it. I every time you. I see you, every like two, three months, whatever, you say the diet starts tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said it, you say it quite often. <sighs> you only Can fail when you give up. Exactly. If I never give up, I never fail. Exactly. Well, that's perfect because now we're going from diet and training and we're leading into the gym. Into the gym. Yeah, your, sweet. Basically your, your life now and how I guess you built it, you know, your, your platform was built. Yep, yep. How did you get into it? What made you like it? 
you can try and um, go from your leg break if you want, because I feel like that works well. When you broke your leg from rugby, so you had yeah, to yeah. rugby. So um, I grew up uh, always wanting to be big and strong. You know what I mean? I like see. my dad, you know, was was a was a big guy. Um, I, I love WWE wrestling. Oh, really? And I was always like, you know, I want to be like Bobby Lashley. I want to be like, you know, John Cena. You know, yeah, I want to be yeah. massive. I want to be muscular, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, pretty much, oh, I obviously wanted to play NRL and I need to become big and strong. And the way, it, what happened was uh, I was under, it was called Harold Matthews. So that was one of the development things that I was doing with West Tigers. Uh, I played Harold Matthews and at our first gym session, oh, we had a gym session at our first training session. Mm. I'd never lift weights in my entire life. Mm. I always knew it was a thing, but my dad never let me come gym with him. Oh, really? Yeah. Why? Oh, because my dad used to train at this old school bodybuilding gym and the owner of that gym was always like, no kids. <laughs> yeah. Is that the oh, one you took me bro, to? Bro, yeah, the oh one we took you to, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's like- In Bradbury. That, that one's like proper like, like old vintage footage of bodybuilders. So yeah, 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 so yeah. vintage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so John Train, wow. Well, uh, shout out to Olympus, you know, Bradbury, Olympus. the bodybuilding gym. If you yeah, know, yeah, in yeah. Campbelltown, lad, one of the best yeah. OG bodybuilder gym. Yeah. The bloke who owns it is an absolute legend. He's yeah. a gangster. Yeah. And um, yeah, uh, but yeah, that's what my dad used to train. And uh, so my dad never let me come gym with him. And then, yeah, so on my first day in the gym, uh, we're lifting weights and uh, we're on bench press and, uh, I think it was 15 kilos on each side. Okay. So a 10 and a five on yeah. each side. Yeah. And I, I, bro, I never even, I never even picked, that's the best press. So I went and grabbed it and I was like, Dude. I was like, oh, holy shit, yeah. that's so heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I got yeah, the rep yeah, out yeah. and I was like, oh shit, what the heck? Yeah. Like that was, that was actually harder. I couldn't even, I couldn't even do one rep. The right, spot right. I had to come and help me every oh, like really? yeah, yeah. yeah. So I walked away and went to the next exercise and I looked back and one of the boys grabs the weight and he goes, Oh, 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 and he puts it on his chest yeah. and I ran across the gym and I go, oh, sorry. And I went to pick up the weights yeah. and he goes, bro, I'm just joking. <laughs> this is light. And so wow. I was embarrassed like because like, you know, I've just made this new representative team. Mm. All of these boys are like guns. Mm. And I'm just like, oh, I'm so embarrassed because I couldn't even lift that of weight. Yeah. yeah. So I was burning wow. and I knew straight away, I'm very far behind. Like all the boys had done like, you know, like the, the, the garage gym workouts and that's how, yeah. But I had absolutely zero experience. Mm. So I asked my dad for my 17th birthday for a gym membership. Yeah. Or 17th or 16th. I think maybe it was 16th birthday. Yeah. And uh, my dad was like, hey, like you're 16, mate. You, what do you want a gym membership for? Yeah. And I was like, oh, I really want to get good at rugby dad. You know, I told yeah, my dad yeah, the whole yeah. raps and everything like that. Yeah. We had my birthday and I, like the whole day went past like, mm. and just before I went to bed, I was like, oh dad, thank you for my birthday. You know, yeah. I was sleep, you know, thank yeah. you so much. When that goes, oh, you're going to bed? Yeah. Oh, let's go get your gym membership then. Oh, and I was like, oh, what so, you think? so we went down to fitness first in yeah. Campbelltown and uh, it was, uh, yeah, well, it was like next to MacArthur Square. So um, went there, he signed me up, got a gym membership. Yeah. And I was like, bruh, that's it. Like, I'm going to the gym every morning before school. Yeah. So I was, when you're 16, you're in like year 10, maybe year nine, or maybe year 10, Yeah, yeah. right? And I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning. Really? Walking down to the gym, mm. right? It was probably like from my house down to the gym, maybe like five kilometers. Mm. It's probably like five kilometers. And I used to get this bus that would take me half of the trip and then I'd walk the rest. Mm. So I'd probably walk like two and a half kilometers first thing in the morning, mm. get to the gym at 5 a.m. when it opened. Yeah. Oh, actually maybe, no, probably opened at 6 a.m. Oh, 6 a.m. it opened. I'd train for an hour and a half. I'd have to pack all my school stuff. Mm. I'd grab all my stuff and go um, jump in the, um, the train and then go to school and everything like that. So like, you know, I'd already had this mindset that I just wanted to just train and I just wanted to do this and I wanted to change my physique and become a red, better rugby player and everything like that. Yeah, okay. And then it all started when, you know, my sleeves at school started getting a little bit tighter, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, my yeah. shorts started uh, riding up yes, on, the, on the, yes, the quadriceps, yes, you know, yes. and then all of a sudden the couple of the girlies in sports class are like, Jaden, you got nice legs. <laughs> oh. Really? Thank you. Yeah, huh? yeah. Didn't know, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, I used to get like a couple compliments from the girls. And Were that. you bigger than the other kids at school at that point? I was already, I was the fatty. I was the, I was the big oh, fat kid. Yeah, okay, yeah, I was okay. the big fat kid. Right. But then it started getting to a stage where I was, I was, I was dropping mad weight because I'd, you know, I'd watch my eating now and I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd yeah, train yeah. more. And, and so I was doing gym sessions in the morning plus footy training after school. Yeah. So like, bros, it was just the perfect recipe to just, you know, lose weight and everything like that. Yeah. So I was dropping the weight. And then one time, one of the girls goes, Jaden, you've gotten so skinny. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> no, 
no way. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, pretty much. I started, like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna start pumping the weights now, bro. I'm yeah, gonna start, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm gonna start eating more and everything like that. Yeah. That's when the diet come in and I started trying to learn more about diet. I got help, help from my rugby team before, nice. from West West Magpies. Nice. And um, yeah, like I also started watching like Pumping Iron and like I'd gotten this like huge motivation from the bodybuilder, Simeon Panda, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lou Ferrigno, like all of those bodybuilders and stuff like that. And yep. I was just like, fuck, I just want to be the biggest, strongest yeah. dude ever. And um, pretty much I've done gym all the way, well, my whole entire life, all the way through rugby. I always wanted to be the strongest player on my rugby team. Yep. And in the gym, I was, yep. always, I always lifted the heaviest amount of weights. I see. And then um, played rugby in America, did all that. I was always the strongest guy. And then I worked security, or oh, I'd, I'd come back from America after playing pro rugby and everything like that. Yeah. Broke my leg, yep. which was unfortunate. But then I was like, oh, this is an opportunity to focus on the gym. I, I could finally just pump the gym out. Cause gym was always- Constant. Well, it was it was always colliding with rugby. Oh, really? Well, bro, I'd be having Different like training. these crazy leg gym sessions and okay. then I'd have rugby training the next day. I see. And I I'd see. be struggling and running, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'd be see. deadlifting 220 for repetitions. And the next day I'd have footy training. You yeah, know, yeah, you'd yeah. just be gone skis. Yeah. So it always, it, it wasn't good that I, I loved see. both. I see. Then in terms of your training then, what sort of training did you do after your leg broke? Because obviously rugby, would have, you had done a few different exercises that increase whatever explosive power, all that running and that. So did your training, is it is your training today what you started doing since you quit rugby? Nah, so, yeah, uh, when, so yeah, when I first started training, it was all about hypertrophy. Okay. It was all about building muscle. Yep. It was all about bodybuilding style training but I also added that implement of um, trying to be fit as well for rugby, right? Yes. But it was always bodybuilding training. That's what I did. Yeah. Then um, as I got to pros, it, it, especially in America, in America, they've they like the way that they do strength and conditioning is it's not about how heavy you can lift. It's about velocity. So they've literally got these bands that they put on the barbell, right? No and then they'll, they'll they'll have a hundred kilos on the barboat, like for example, yep. and they'll put the band on there, right? And then they'll, it'll have like the, a phone that's attached over here, right? And then when you squat, it's about how fast you can come up oh, really? and it'll give you a number on how fast you went up. Oh, wow. So you'd come yeah. down with a hundred kilos and it'll be like 4.3. I see, and then you go I next see. 4.7. And then I everyone's see. like, the, the, if it goes up, everyone, all the boys are like, yeah, 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 yeah. And you're just like, Fuck, I wanna get faster, I wanna get faster. That's amazing. Which was like, you know, that that is what carries over perfectly yes. to um to rugby. You know what I mean? You yeah. wanna be explosive. You don't wanna be like squatting 300 kilos will help you a little bit in rugby, mm. but the guy that can lift two, like, you know, 150 kilos extremely fast and is explosive, that guy will be much more efficient on the rugby field. I see, I so see. then I started training for explosive strength. Yeah. Now I do strongman, which yeah. is a lot of um, practicing the certain movements that we have to do for strongman. Yeah. And it's also uh, a lot of accessory work. So if we need a strong press, yeah. Triceps are now very important. Rear delts are now I very see. important. So we do a lot of accessory work. It, I would say it's predominantly accessory work. I see. Yeah, so um, it's yeah. a lot about doing the things that complement the movements that we need to do on competition day. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people think, oh, you do strong man, you just live heavyweights all the time. Yeah, it's actually quite technical and it's quite, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, there's a there's a reason for everything that we do. Yeah. And, and I love it, man. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. so good, man. Yeah. Strong man really carries over really well to everything and anything, you know what I mean? Like, that's mad. I like lifting heavy stuff, running with it, doing what I have to do, and everything like that. I yeah. love the sport of strongman. Yeah. And the, how I got into strongman was uh, after I'd broken my leg. Yep. I was just in the gym doing whatever I could: bicep curls, shoulder presses, you know, bench presses, whatever. Yeah. And then I progressed into, uh, um, well, I didn't progress into it. Uh, I was working security at the pub, yeah. and I had a like I'd just come uh, good from my bung leg. Yeah. And uh, the pub that I was working security at, they had a strongman competition there. Yeah. And uh, I was like, hey, strongman competition at my pub? Lad? This is my pub, lad. you know? No, <laughs> yeah, no one's yeah, gonna yeah. claim this strongman title yeah. of my pub, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, stuff it, I'm jumping in. One of my close boys, Tino, uh, shout out to Tino who got me into strongman. Yep. For the, I would say the, the previous three years, he'd always told me, so you gotta come to strongman, bro. Cause he was a strongman mm -hmm. competitor. He's like, bro, you'd kill it, you'd kill it, you'd kill it. Yeah. Went in and took it out, came first. Yeah. I was Southwest Sydney's strongest man and I'd qualified for New South Wales strongest man. Wow. So I had to compete for a state title. Mm -hmm. And I was like, 
I love this sport. It's so, it's the most alpha sport. Strongman is like, bro, it's well and good yeah. to do a bench press and go like this, you know? It's well and good to do a back squat and go, you know? Well and good to do a, a, a deadlift and sure, you know, that's all, that's all amazing. That's great stuff, right? But can you pull 500 kilos on your back and run? Like, can you pick up a, a stone that weighs 150 kilos and pick it up and roll it up onto your shoulder? You know what I mean? Like this is the, this is, this was the gym stuff before the gym was a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? When yeah. we were working and lifting boulders and, mm. you know, I, th I think it's like, uh, I don't know, like like Viking, like you know, like, yeah, like you know, the, yeah, 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 like you know, yeah. prehistoric. You yeah. know, this is how we did stuff. This is how we built the pyramids, yes, man. You know yes, what I mean? Like yeah. that that kind of stuff. And yeah, I love it, bro, because it just carries over so well to everything that I do. You really? Know what I mean? Wow. Like, yeah. And how, what was the transition? Because the gym. At which point did you start pumping strongman to become fourth strongest man? Because obviously this is your first title, right? Yeah. So at which point were you like, that's it? I'm gonna be a pro in strongman. Yeah. So I did that first competition. Yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm, I'm Southwest strongest man. Like, yeah, yeah. like that already felt amazing. Yeah. And I was like, I'm, I'm good at this sport. Yeah. Like all of the stuff that I'd learned from rugby, all of the gym stuff that I've done carried over extremely well. I see. Already, yeah. Then I did, um, it was a like a New South Wales kind of like strongest man. Yeah. And I came fourth in that one. But the reason I came fourth is two out of the five events, I got disqualified. So- if I hadn't got disqualified, I may have walked away with a with a third place. I see, I, I, actually, I, I definitely would have walked away with a third place yeah, if I didn't yeah. get those two disqualified. Yeah. But the, the guy who came second and first were very experienced guys. I they see. were extremely strong. Yeah. And still to this day, those boys are up there. Like yeah. they're 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 some of the strongest in Australia right yeah. now. Yeah. And uh, my goal is to be better than those those guys. Mm. And um, I would say after that competition, I was like. Man, I can bang. I can bang with these guys. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. these guys have been training for years. Yeah, these guys have, have, have been doing this sport for ages. Yeah. I'm brand new to the scene and mm. I've I, I can I can have a go with them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then straight after that competition, I did a international competition, which was in New Zealand. Yep. Went to New Zealand and I came second. And there was another guy who had beat me who's who's been in the strongman industry for years and years. Wow. He's very experienced, very strong dude. And he came first and it was just from a couple mistakes I had made really? on certain events mm. that didn't allow me to win that one. Um, and then in that situation, I was kind of like, man, I've just come to a, a different country. I've beat all of the competitors from this country. And the other guy that beat me was a guy who's extremely experienced and from my country. Yeah. So I was like, all right. And then I, well, just luck, lucky enough, I had gotten the call up to play, oh, to, sorry, to compete in Australia's Strongest Man because I didn't qualify. Mm. But last minute they had a bunch of people who had qualified pull out and I was next in line and they messaged me and they were like, oh, can you compete in Australia's Strongest Man in two weeks after your competition oh, wow. in New Zealand? Yeah, yeah. And I said, I would love to. I said, <laughs> I would absolutely <laughs> yeah, love to. Yeah, yeah. Now I had absolutely no ambition to try and win it or like, you know, like I, I wanted to go out there and do my best. Yeah, yeah. After the first day we did four events and I was coming second yeah. after the first day. And I was just like, I'm literally beating all the OGs in this sport, like yeah. all the big dogs, That's all the crazy. big names. And That's I was like, crazy. oh man, I couldn't believe it. That's crazy. And then second day, I'd made a couple of mistakes, you know, which is yeah. which is common when you're new to a sport yeah. and there's little, uh, little bits of discipline and little things I could have done better that would have carried me even higher. Yeah. But yeah, it was unfortunate. Well, I mean, I still walked away with four strongest men in That's Australia, crazy. which is That's crazy. at my first time ever competing in Australia, strongest yeah. man. Far out. Yeah. I, was, I was extremely proud of that. Eh? Do you have any uh, like advice for your followers who are already you know in the gym? And I think I think strongman is becoming a bit cooler now as well. It's become you know a bit more mainstream. Mm. Do you have yeah. any advice in transferring from you know standard bench press gym into strongman? Oh, um, well, pretty much. Uh, it, there's like this stigma around strongman and. For some strange reason, whenever I like say to people, oh man, you should come try strongman. Mm. This is what they first say. Oh, I'm not strong enough. Right. Okay. Like as if you have to be strong before you came into the sport. Mm. But it's not like that, man. It's really not, eh? Like um, I obviously had an athletic background before coming to the sport, but there's a bunch of strongman athletes who started in the gym, in a yeah. strongman gym. Yeah. And they're like now some of the strongest people in the world right now. And it's just like, um, I mean, 
if you want to try it, bro, go get amongst it. Yeah. Go down to your your local strongman gym. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I'm sure the the person who owns the gym or there'll be some other people in there. Strongmen are also the nicest people, man. Like uh, I've, I've met a lot of people in this strongman game and everyone's happy to help. <clears throat> Maybe when it gets a little bit higher in the competition, then they're yeah. a bit like, oh, I don't want to tell you my secrets. Yeah, but yeah. man, if you're a newer, new, new person, ha- they'll be happy to help. Wow. Man, uh, I, my first strongman gym was PTC in MacArthur in Campbelltown. And um, I was lucky I had Tino. So Tino really took me under his wing and showed me everything. Mm. But like Tino will be explaining some some exercise to me and they'd be like the other blokes in the gym with these big massive dudes. Yeah, yeah. And they'd be like, yeah, man, what you want to do is you want to bring that in, you know, keep the back. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. what the heck? I'm like, wow, this is such yeah. a cool, you know, cool place, cool environment. Yep, yep. And um, yeah, like I said, if you want to get into Strongman, if you want to try a Strongman, just go down to a Strongman gym, have a crack, man. Yeah. Obviously start light. <laughs> don't, you don't try to be the strongest man on day one yep. and just go have a crack and see if you like it. Um, even watch Strongman and this, because that's, I would say that's what made me want to do it. I'd watch like, you know, the strongest men in the world and they'd be picking up like, you know, um, sandbags that weigh 150, 60 kilos and running and then putting it on somewhere and then running back and grabbing tires that weigh like 140 kilos and then running back. And I used to always think, man, I swear I could do that. Eh? Like, I swear I could do that. And then I gave it a go and turns out I can do it. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I think we'll leave the gym now. I think, you know, Jim, you already cover a lot of it on your yep. Instagram and socials and whatnot. Let's go to moving out when you were 18 by yourself. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I think I just grew up a lot faster than everyone around me and like all my boys and, you know, people around me, stuff See. like that. Um, I was- <laughs> Let's start with why did you move out at 18? Cause obviously yeah. your family's all good and you um, yeah. love your family. What triggered you to move out? So <laughs> I'll tell you the, I'll, I'll tell the truth straight out. Uh, I moved out because me and my mom used to argue really? about dishes. No way. Yeah, bro. Like I should have done my dishes. So you didn't do them? Oh, bro. So I'd wake up, I'd wake, bro. I was, I was, I was, um, I was going to TAFE. I was studying my cert three and four in fitness, okay. right? I was training at the gym. Mm. Right, I was also playing for West Tigers, mm. right? And um, so I'd wake up in the morning, like go to the gym, yep, yep. early hours in the morning, then go to TAFE, then go to rugby training. So I'd leave the house at like five o'clock in the morning and I'd get home at like 9 p.m. Cause I'd just be out all day, bro. Yep. And so I'd wake up and I'd prep all my meals cause that's when I used to eat real clean. And I was like, you know, trying to eat like Kai Green and everything like that. Yep. <laughs> and I'd make my stuff and I'd just chuck my dishes oh, in, the, really? in the sink, yeah. And they just clean themselves and you wake up. And <laughs> that's mad. Magically, yeah. some days I come over and they were clean. That's you know? mad. But yeah. then my mom who also, you know, was working all day. Yeah. She'd come home and um, yeah, my dishes would be there and she, she's trying to cook, you know, she wants to cook dinner for my brother and her. Yeah. And the dishes are there, you know, she got angry and and we'd, we'd argue back and forth and uh, she kind of like tested me. Or, and oh, that's that's what I think it was in the moment. Bro, I was just a little kid. I was a little shit, bro. I was, I was 18 years old. Yeah. You know, you think you're the man, but you're not. And I, and I regret being like that, like uh, just stubborn. I was a little shit, bro, honest. I, I regret that I was like that. But- um. So you fought over the dishes <coughs> and was it like a- like an argument that that's it, move out there. And I'm like, fine, I will. No, nah, yeah, was it like, bro, literally. I was like that. That's exactly what it was. Really? She said to me, oh, well, you wouldn't be, oh, no, she said something like, if you, if you want to stay here, you need to do your own things. Otherwise go out by yourself. You wouldn't even survive. <laughs> and you know what I said? I said, watch me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like an idiot. Wow. And uh, so <clears throat> my cousin, his missus was working in real estate. Okay. I called her, I said, can you give me a place? Yeah. And she's like, yes, I can. Yeah. Got me a place. Where? Uh, Amber Vale. Where the hell's that? Amber Vale's in Campbelltown. Oh, okay, it's another okay. suburb. Oh, okay. And um, it was an apartment, my own apartment, two nice. bedrooms. Oh, I was, wow. it was 360 a week. That's mad. And I was work, I was also working at the gym, bro. I forgot about that part. I was mm. working at the gym and studying at TAFE and playing footy and going to the gym in the morning. Mm. So bro, I was jam packed, bro. Yeah. And it was, my, my mentality at that time was I've got goals. And no one's gonna stop me from getting to these goals, mm. right? And anything that is low priority, I do not care about it. Mm, mm, mm. And unfortunately in that moment, washing dishes was a low priority for mm, me. Mm, mm. And stupidly enough, you know, I'm living under my mom's house, you know, like I should have just done it, bro. Yeah. And but that, I was just an idiot. In terms of goals at that point, like that far <clears throat> you had to move out and chase the goals, what were your like, I guess, 
uh, priorities? Was it goals to be financially successful? Bro, goals I just, to- I wanted to be the best I could possibly be. And I knew that in order to be the best person I could be, I had to, to study, I had to learn, gain yep. my education. I yep. had to get stronger, go to the gym. Yep. I had to play high level rugby, which I was training with Tigers at the time. And I also had to, what was the other thing I was doing? Oh, I can't remember, but mm. I, was, I was juggling a bunch of things. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. working. I was trying to make money as well. Yeah. So um, I was working at the gym and yep. I was a, a floor staff. So I used to pick up weights. Mm. And at that time I was probably making like 700 to 800 a week. Yeah. For five days, five hours, five picking up hours. picking up the weights yeah. after the cunts who didn't put their weights back. And um, so I did all that. Uh, and yeah, like I said, my mum would like blast me about the dishes and I'd just be, in my head, I'd just be like, like the understand, I barely sleep. Like, oh, <laughs> like I'm so tired. What was your mum doing at that time? She, uh, she, well, she worked, she worked. What, what like what job? Uh, she was, uh, she worked at a call center. Oh really? Yeah, she worked at a call center. And my mum was awesome, man. Like my, my parents split up. And in that time, my mom was a single parent of two boys, you know, that two boys, I think they're the man, yep. unfortunately. Yep. And I'm very sorry, you know, mom, if you're watching this, I apologize, <laughs> you know, but uh, I was an idiot, you know, I was just, I was just so goal driven, bro. And I just wanted to just reach my goals, bro. And I just wanted to be yep. the best I could be. And unfortunately I hurt my mom's feelings along that way. And I, yeah. I regret it. It's definitely yeah. something I regret. Yeah. Like, to be honest, why don't I just fucking do the dishes? why don't I just give my mum money for rent instead of trying to be the man and fucking move out by myself? Mm. It's ridiculous to me. Mm. And I, and it's something I really regret. Mm. But I also learned to be independent. Mm. And uh, at the age of 18, my mates were going to the pub and buying bags and, and uh, you know, buying cases and drinking and doing all that stuff. And I was buying uh, fridges and uh, microwaves. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, was, yeah. I was decking out my new place yeah. and, uh, Bro, I did. I decked it out. It was yeah. hectic. I had my own apartment. Yeah. I literally used to have, I had a TV unit. Yeah. This like, I think it was like 40 inch TV, whatever it was. I had the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 <laughs> and PlayStation, PlayStation 4. At that time. I can't remember. Uh, maybe PlayStation 4 wasn't at that time. Yeah, yeah. Nah, maybe it was PlayStation 3. I can't remember. But I had all of them and I was like, fuck, I'm the man, lad, you know, everything like that. But yeah, it was just, um. Yeah. I learned a lot in that, in that time. Yeah. And um, yeah, independent. Just yeah. fucking, oh, it's it's me against the world now, bro. Nice, and, nice. And uh, I'm out in the deep end, and it's I gotta swim or die or drown. Yeah, it's, it's one or the other. And that's when you started working <clears throat> all your different jobs as well. So tell them about all the jobs you've had. You know, traffic control, being a secchi, and heaps in between. Yeah, I've done heaps of jobs. Eh, mm. I've done demolition. I've done pick packing. I've done flooring. I've done concreting. I've done gym floor stuff. I've done personal training. I was a waiter. I've done You're a waiter. Every, yeah, that was my first job. That was oh, my first right, ever really? job. I was a waiter yeah, yeah. At, a, at a restaurant. Mm. And um, yeah, man, all of those jobs were lessons. Yeah. And um, so before I started making videos full time, uh, doing social media full time, I was working three jobs. Well, actually four, four jobs. You know what I mean? Like I said, my dad instilled work ethic and hard work within me. So there's no way I was not going to work seven days with my dad is working seven days a week. So. I was working traffic control Sunday to Thursday. I did security Friday and Saturday. And that way I wouldn't get, well, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna talk about that. So, <laughs> but pretty much Sunday to Thursday, traffic yeah. control, Friday, Saturday security. Yeah. And then I also owned a printing business. Yes. So I printed during the day and I worked at night time. And then I was also playing rugby. So I get played, uh, paid playing rugby as well. Yeah. So that was four different incomes I had and I yep. was just working like a dog, like, yeah, like all day, yeah. every day. Like I, sleep was not a priority for me. I remember me. you telling me you would work traffic control and then do se- uh, security on the weekend and sleep in King's Cross. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, when I was growing up, I actually asked my boss if I could set up an air mattress in the work office. And then that way I could sleep for like four hours in between shifts because I'd work Sephora. So I was a security guard at Sephora. Yeah, right. and I'd do like 12 hours. Yeah. And then I'd go straight from there to Candy's nightclub or the club somewhere in King's Cross. I'd do like six or seven hours. Mm. And then after I'd finished there, I started my next shift in like four hours or, so, or five hours, something like that. Crazy. Yeah. So then I'd, I'd walk to the, the office, I'd go in the office, I'd set up my air mattress, lie yeah. down, sleep for four hours, wake up, straight back to the next job. Yeah. And I used to do that for four days straight. Yeah. And I'd make like, in that time, I'd probably make like two and a half grand, something yeah. like that. Yeah. But I mean, two and a half grand, for four days work mm. when you're, I think I was like 19. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was crazy to me. Yeah, that's like, a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Well, I thought I was rich, bro. I thought I was rich. Like, of course. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, bro, I just, I worked hard and yeah. I, I juggled all those jobs all the way until I made the decision to come to Gold Coast mm. and I, I live here in Gold Coast now. Yeah. And uh, I pretty much, I moved here and my plan was to like, oh, I was gonna, I'm gonna get a traffic control job, right, I'm gonna get a security yeah, job. Yeah, that was yeah. the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got here and cause I was like kind of in the deep end cause I didn't have work. Mm. I started selling merch. I started making gym programs yep. and I started kind of working on the business Langstrong, which is, something that I made up in the traffic control work you when I was with Manu working at nighttime. And we were like, bro, I'm gonna make something. Like, what should I call it? And we're like, Lang Fit and, you know, <laughs> Jaden Lang lifts yeah, or, you know, all those yeah, random yeah, yeah. names, you know? And then yeah. um, we came up with Lang Strong. Yeah. And we're kind of like, nah, nah, we'll just do it for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm like so passionate about Langstrong. Yeah, I love yeah. Langstrong, like, like Langstrong carpet, Langstrong desk, like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm gonna get a Langstrong LED light over here, Langstrong hats, Langstrong basketball yeah, singlet, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like I, I dedicate my life to Langstrong now. And um, it's so cool because I've really invested in that. I've put a lot of time towards that. I took my content a lot more serious and I started pumping videos out much more regularly. Yeah. And um, really, if I have an idea, do it. Yeah, you know, don't don't let these ideas go to waste, man. Mm. Let's do it. And yeah, fuck. That's crazy. Um, I when I first moved here to Gold Coast mm. uh, a year and a half ago, I had fifty thousand followers on Instagram. Really? Yeah, and yeah. I have four hundred and sixty thousand now. Yeah, so I've grown four hundred and ten thousand followers. That's crazy. In a year and a half. That's crazy. Yeah, that is pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. bro. Oh, it blows my mind, bro. Yeah. You know the the hard work and everything. That's just a reflection. That's you, what it all is, bro. He works very hard. Like even, it makes sense now because you already now you don't sleep that much. And yeah. I don't think people know that. Like he'll have so much stuff to do and he will choose to do that over sleep. And even like driving me to the airport at like four in the morning and things like that, you'd always do it. And you're 100. just running. Jaden never has like a down time. You never have days where you're like, oh, I might just chill out. Like you always have shit to do and you prioritize it over the sleep. And I can see it makes sense because you did that. For years, bro, Correct. since traffic control, since the Seki, do you think it comes from like seeing your dad work hard? Like why, how do you have that work ethic and how do you keep it up, especially when you become successful already? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, I, like, I've, I've already mentioned it in this podcast. My mm. dad is, yeah. is, is the huge influence into yep. why I'm able to work so hard because like yep. I said, my dad works seven days a week, man. There's no yeah. way that I could work Monday to Friday and go, whew. Yeah. I gotta take my boots off, man. Yeah. You know, I got the weekend to do whatever I want. Yeah. No. But how do you keep going? Like when say <sighs> and money's then, already sorted, how do you well, keep going? To be honest, uh in in business and mm. uh in uh when you wanna be the best that you possibly can be, yeah. I don't think you could ever stop, bro. I don't think there's there, there is a such a thing as like Oh, I've done enough now. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just always chasing the best thing. Yeah. This last few years of my life has just been an absolute roller coaster. Yeah. Like, there was one year where I did like seven countries. The next year, I'd done like six countries. Yeah. And I'm experiencing all these new places. I'm doing new stuff. Like, yeah. Um, I'm constantly just like raising the bar and yeah. doing more and more. And, and yeah. like, I'm just always like, man, I'm so blessed. Yeah. Um, Do you feel constantly surprised in your like, say, last year? Is it constant surprises or is it? Oh, yeah. Because I was curious. Is it like, are you like, wow, I've done this, wow, I've done this, or is it like this is all going to plan? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, are, are you very calculated with it? Like, do you have a target in a year's time where you want to be? I don't have a target. Okay. I just always try my best. Yeah. That's right. Amazing. So I don't. Yeah. I, I don't have like full. Like, this year, I have to do this. Well, yeah. I kind of do because, yeah. like, I will have a target every year, but. Mm. Uh, really, I'm just trying my best. Yeah. Because this year, my goal was to make Australia's strongest man for next year. That was my goal this year. I ended up becoming fourth strongest man in Australia. I ended up getting sponsored by Cerberus Australia, which is like the number one strongman company. Mm. And I'm now sponsored by them. Mm. And I've also traveled and I've mm. also like, you know what I mean? Like I'm just mm. always preceding my expectations yeah. and, and what I want to do. And I just do way better yeah. because I'm always trying my best. I see. I so, see. um, you know, uh, you know when uh, it's coming to New Year's Eve, and it's like the 2024 season has come to an end, mm. and then and you go, you know, you know the songs, and yeah, 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 you do yeah. the uh, 2020, you know, recap. Yeah, yeah, bro. The first time I ever made one, mm. I was like, I've got the best life in the world. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. bro, 
Yeah, yeah. I went to Egypt. I went to Jordan. Yeah, I did, yeah. did two wonders of the world this year. Yeah. I did this. I did this. I went hikes and I did this. Yeah. And I was like, I've traveled. I've done this. Okay, I was like, I have the best life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the next year, I made another one, and I was like, Holy moly! I didn't think I could top that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on TV. <laughs> I was on a show called Survivor, and then I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did this. I traveled. I did the Ha Zhang Loop. I went to Vietnam for a month, and I did mm. this and did that, and I was just like. I can't believe that, like that, that year was crazy. Yeah. And now this year has gone and like, I've become the fourth strongest man in Australia. I've done this, yeah. I've done that. I've, I've yeah. traveled to, I just came back from, New, I did New Zealand, I did Bali, I did Japan. I fought sumo wrestlers. I beat two professional sumo wrestlers mm. in Japan. Like every year, just kid, like God blesses me yeah. more and more with the harder and the more that I put into this, this craft of mine, Yeah. you know, yeah. Um, this craft of making videos is is my talent yeah. and a skill that God has blessed me with. Yeah. And I'm just I'm just using it, bro. You know, yeah. just as um You can see how much he loves life as well. Oh. Why you said that and you blessed about everything and oh. you, you live for like the experiences as well. Like you don't care about all the designer shit and flexing all that. Like you don't even like care about driving a nice car and whatnot. No. Why do you think that is? Like you enjoy life and experiences have always been more important for you. Oh man. Cause not everyone's like that, you know well, I mean? yeah. Especially in Australia, everyone's everyone like measures, everyone be... measures success and um and stuff like that differently. You what know is what I mean? your definition of success? Oh, my definition of success is when I can call my mum and go, Mum, you don't have to work anymore. Dad, you don't have to work anymore. Dad, sell the house yeah. that, that you're trying to you're trying to pay off for me. Yeah. Sell that house and do whatever yeah. you want. You're retired now. I'll yeah. pay all your bills, I'll do everything like that. Yeah. For me, if you did that. You're successful, lad. Yeah. Like you're you're the man. You're actually the man. Honest say, bro. Like Lang fit. <laughs> <laughs> like if you do that, that's amazing. You're the man, yeah, bro. Yeah. More people need to have that attitude, bro. Like yeah. my parents sacrificed everything. Like both my parents came to this country, Australia, yep. for me. Yep. To give me more opportunities to do, yep. like, you know, to like the 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 least I can do. Yep. Is retire them and 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 be a great example of or like uh, of their sacrifices and yeah. their hard work and everything like that. What have your parents been saying recently? Like anything, oh, any moments that's like, oh my God. I've already got, I've, or, I've already achieved a little, you yeah, know, yeah, I'm proud yeah. of you. I've already, yeah. I've already, oh, I've already gotten that. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah. yeah, that's yeah I've done that, I've done that. Yeah, yeah. Which is, which is cool as bro. Yeah. Um, yeah, my mom was extremely proud. My mom was my number one fan, you know, shout out to she, my mom. She's she is, definitely watching this. Bro, I, I follow like me and his mom follow each other on Instagram and she will post stories of you all day. Yeah. Like, yeah. Whatever you post, I'll see it again. Yeah. yeah. Hers, and she's clearly so proud of you. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. so cute. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. man. It's yeah. a, it's a, it's a cool thing. Yeah. But uh, now we, uh, do you want to talk about video creating? Um, what have we got left on there? What, what's, what's, um, career, starting a business mindset we touched on. I reckon let's do video. I want, I, want, I, have right. a bit, I want to ask you. Yeah. All right. Video creating. Now, obviously we're talking about movie stuff. I've noticed one thing about you. You have seen everything. You watch heaps of shit. You've seen every show, every movie, and you, you're very animated. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but any, any scene, you have like a character for it. You're yeah. very animated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've also seen every movie. So I'm curious, do you think your movie consumption <laughs> oh. has translated into uh, yep. your ability to make videos now. A hundred percent, bro. Mm. So I've watched a bunch of movies. Like me, look, I grew up in the era of um, Video Easy and Blockbuster, you know mm. what I mean? You go down mm. to the, the rental places mm. and you, you rent a movie and you watch it with your whole family. Yeah. And then yeah. after the movie, you talk about the movie yeah. and you know what I mean? So we're, we're watching movies on the regular, yeah. bro. Yeah. And um, I also, Grew up watching WWE, the most animated, you know, dramatic yeah, true, guys you ever be. Like, <laughs> and that's why at SummerSlam, yeah, yeah. I'll see you there. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. like, bro, I loved all that stuff, yeah. bro. I watched all of like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, where the characters are just outrageous. You know yes, what I mean? Yeah. And I just loved all that stuff. I just yeah. grew up with it. And I loved it. I watched The Simpsons, where you know Bart was just this like ruthless kid. Homer yeah. is just a clown, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Like. 
I just loved that stuff so much. I thought it was so funny. You've seen everything, dude, and you know quotes from it. And it definitely would help, like, cause even your videos in terms of angles and stuff, you've always got it. And we'll, oh. we'll get to any spot. We want to film a specific video. We have the vision and it's instantly on it. The way he edits videos, like you guys have seen his work. So you think movies and consuming translates to I, better yeah, content? Yeah, I definitely think. Yeah. Well, unless you've got a specific niche, like you make videos about a certain thing yep. that has an audience for that. Well, yep. then you don't really need to consume content because you've mm. got you've got a, a thing. Yeah. But for me, uh, I watch a lot of stuff, um, and then I consume a lot of content. Yes. I watch TikTok all the time. You do. I'm watching videos <laughs> all the you time. Fucking, this guy will send me videos at like four a.m. Bro, yeah. always consuming yeah, yeah, content, yeah. right? And yeah. then what I do is when I consume that content, it gives yep. me inspiration and it gives yes. me. How can I make that better? Mm. If I was to do that, how would mm. I do it? Mm. And really, that's what this this game is, bro. Like, mm. the, like the art of of video creating. How can I make it better? Mm. How can like it, you've always got to be thinking like that? Mm. Like, for example, I'll, I'll give you two two examples, right? Mm. Um, there was the trend where you 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 do you know scissors paper rock and then you run eat. and eat. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Everyone does the same thing. Mm. Everyone runs, eats the food. And that's the end of the video. Mm. Now it's a trending thing, right? Mm. But if it's trending and everyone's expecting the same ending, mm. why wouldn't you do something different yeah. so that it blows people out of the water? You know what I mean? Yeah. Bro, if everyone's wearing, you know, uh, uh, let's say everyone's wearing bucket hats. That's the trend, man. Everyone's wearing bucket hats. Well, guess what? I'm wearing a bucket hat that's got the frilly thing out the back or it's got a neck strap and it's just, you know, yeah. I just always want to be different, bro. I never want to follow the crowds. I don't care what everyone's doing. What doing. Mm. Like if you're doing that, you do that. I want to do something. I'm going to do something that I uh, think is cool. I'll give it a know? bit like emo, eh? A bit emo, yeah. Bit <laughs> <laughs> Damn, so different. I hate oh, everybody so here, like, man. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get strapped with my bucket hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. Oh, oh, that's mad. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I've always been like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's carried over to my videos. Yeah. And I give you another example mm. is um the uh just give me my money. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a trend, you know, yeah. it's popping right now. Yeah. Anytime yeah. you see a video that says, just give me my money, yeah. you watch it to the end. Yeah. So I took that and used that to my advantage and I put a full story to it and nice. made it cinematic and nice. made it entertaining and made it even longer than it had to be and even more dramatic. Nice. But when people see that, straight away it's different and straight away they're like, I have to show someone else this. Yeah, yeah. So they, they share it or they comment yeah. on it or yeah. they like it or whatever. Yeah. And it's a, a recipe destined for a successful video. Yes. There and, you go, uh, secret recipe. Then in terms of your content right now, so you've got like everything, you've got funny skits, you've got gym stuff, you've got, you know, promos for the brands you love. Where is your plan? Like, where do you want to go with your social media? Are you keeping it the same? Is there anything your fans can expect coming up that's different? Um, Where's your head up? Well, uh, now that like, cause like brands are always hitting me up. Yeah. Can you wear out this? Can you wear out this? Can you yeah. wear out that? So now, um, and then they they obviously pay me to make a creative video yeah. for their brand. And that's all really good. I love that. You know, I love getting, you know, supporting other bizos and wearing their clothes and I get free clothes and it's sick, bro. I yeah. love it. Now I'm at the stage where I just want to do my own thing, bro. I want my own clothes. Yeah. I want I want I want to I want to build a an empire and a foundation that's going to be something that I build for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we started with Langstrong hats, you yeah. know, we've, we've, we've sold heaps of them. I reckon I sold like 3000 of them. Um, and we're progressing into, I've now got a full team. I've got a full team now, bro. I've got people that are gonna be doing my website, gonna be doing um, my designs. They're gonna be doing, uh, uh, like looking after the, the clientele, customers and everything like that. Mm. And we've got, you know, basketball singlets. I got track mm. suit, so I'm wearing it right now. Mm. Damn. All the official Langstrong stuff, bro. I've got windbreakers. I got bum bags over here. Yep. And um, yeah, bro, once all this stuff comes out and I start making like proper gears that I genuinely love wearing and yep. I start rocking my own stuff and doing stuff like that, like yep. that's what's that's what I really want to do. Yeah. Like I, like, uh, bro, the feeling that I have when I'll go down the street and someone's wearing my Langstrom hat, it's just, oh, like, yeah, it yeah. blows my mind, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it's it's the crazy feeling. Bro, I, I, I did, um, 
I did Langstrong hats and this family for their Christmas photo, no way. they were all wearing Langstrong That's hats cute. in their Christmas photo, bro. So cute. It yeah. blew my mind, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. That, like that my videos have been so in, influential to these this family, whole family that their whole family wanted to support me and wear my hats in their Christmas photo. Yeah, that's nuts. Like, bro, like yeah. even the connection like he has to his fans is crazy. Like, I, I have like a few influencer mates, whatever, but you're the only one where a fan would see him and they will scream. Do you know what I mean? Like, if no matter what they're doing, it's like, oh, Jaden, and they instantly approach you. And how did you build that connection? Do you think? Like, I'm sure a lot of your fans do fitness videos, I want to be similar to what you do, release merch. How do you think you build a brand where you have that connection where you say, buy these singlets, use this supplement. How do you build that like connection to your followers? Oh man, I wish there was like a secret recipe or something mm, like that, mm, mm. but I've been extremely blessed and yep. I've just been myself, bro. You have and always. I, uh, I always put my, my morals and my values first and um, there's things that I will do and things that I won't do and what I think is right and what I think is not not right. And I've just always been authentic to who I am and who I truly am myself. The way that I am in my videos, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll put the energy on, you know, I'll switch on just like you would before you lift heavy weights. Mm. You know, before I lift heavy weights, I'll G up and I go, come on, let's go, let's go. You know, I'll do the same thing for videos because I'm passionate about both. I'm passionate about making videos and I'm passionate about lifting weights. So they both apply for me. Um, when people meet me out in the street, the you may not get that amplified version of me because I'm just mm. chilling, you know, I'm at the grocery store or something like that. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to yeah. trying to get something to tell sandwiches or something, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. But like, you know, some people expect that from me all the time. And then some people will get that because yeah. I feel up to it and that's how I am. Yeah. But I'm also very selective of who I give that energy to for sure, as for well. Sure. Um, for sure. But other than that, bro, majority of the encounters that I've had with people, yeah. they always say to me, wow, oh, bro, you're the same. Uh, like how you are in your videos, you're the same yeah, in real life. Yeah. And I take a lot of pride in that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause like I've met a lot of people that, that also make videos mm. and they're nothing like who they make out they're gonna be online. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, just like, yeah. that must be tiring, eh? Yeah, Cause I'm just yeah. myself, bro. I like having a laugh. Yeah. The way that I'm speaking here is the same <laughs> way that we'd be speaking yeah. if we were at the gym or we were over there, we're over here, whatever. Confirm. It's probably the most authentic creator I know. Um, obviously he's my bro, but you've always been real to everyone. You're very black and white. Um, you're very genuine and your videos show that. People can feel that. I see comments all the time. He seems like such a genuine guy or whatever. <laughs> you're very real. Um, now we've talked about like the highs. Let's talk about the lows, man. <laughs> Let's talk about the lows, some saucy, some spicy stuff, man. Through your career, obviously your life has changed so much, right? Like you've went, gone to America, so many countries, you've come back, you broke your leg, you're fucked. You gotta get back into the gym, you get back on, you wanna be the strongest man and your content is flying. Mm. You've done all these bizos, you've worked so many jobs. Talk us through the lows of your life and I mean, you can pick what you wanna talk about and yeah. how you navigated through that. Cause I feel like you're so positive, people think, oh, Jaden's always happy. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. how do you, what, anything you wanna share and how you navigated through it? Um, so like, uh, I've, I've, I've been extremely blessed and I, I think life is really about perspective yep. and how you look at things, you know what I mean? Like, and, uh, traveling and, you know, playing sports and doing all the stuff that I've done in my life has given me an amazing perspective of life and I'm extremely blessed and I love my life. And I just, bro, like everything's always positive because it is positive, bro. Mm. Like me and you are so fortunate to grow up in Australia, which is the best country in the world, like in my opinion. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like, like we're just so blessed, bro. And um, and that's my perspective and that's how I live my life. And when you when you project positive energy into the world, um, God blesses you, the world blesses you, people around you bless you. You know what I mean? When you're, you know, a good cunt, yeah. fuck everyone's just a good cunt to you as well, bro. You know what I mean? It's just it's just how it works. And um, yeah, bro, I've just been so blessed, bro. Not a lot of bad stuff has happened to me. I've had bad things, and you know what? I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a little, yeah, give little, him a little bit. I'll give you give a little, a little sne bit, sneak peek man. of what is coming in the next few episodes. But um, this is not something I'm proud of, and this is why I've never, I've never ever actually told this story. I've never ever actually spoken about this. Mm. I reckon there's probably like maybe, honest, bro. I reckon there's maybe like three people, four people in my life. And I maybe know this story, you know. I only, I told my mom maybe like 
a few years after it even happened. But in America, um, when I was playing rugby over there, the reason that I had to come back wasn't because of COVID. It was actually because I got arrested and I had to go. Sorry, I shouldn't be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Tell Sorry. me your trauma. Tell Sorry. me your trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I actually don't know why I laughed. But yeah, I got arrested yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. and my visa got um, yeah. taken away, and, yep. and that's why I had to come back. Yeah, and I'll explain the whole story in another podcast. It's a good story. I, I, I love in another it. opportunity. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've told Winner because we were in the game Survivor together, and yeah, that's why yeah. he knows it. Yeah, we my mom knows it, and my missus knows it, and maybe yeah. one of my close boys knows it as well. It's a good story too. I feel like it would help like a lot of people like understand it. Yeah, it, it's a it's a good story. Like, like I, I said, bro, not not, not a lot of bad things happen to me, but yeah. when when everything is good and something bad does happen, it, mm. it hits ten times harder. Yeah. And now, uh, yeah, you know, you, you go through it and whatever. I'm not proud that, that it happened. And that and to be honest, I'm ashamed that it even happened. And that's why I don't talk about it because mm. not something, it, I, I forget about those things. I focus on what's good instead of what's yeah, bad. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But uh, yeah, man, I'm I'm blessed. I love yeah, my life. I'm so grateful. Yeah. I have the best life and um, I can't wait to see what God has, has next for me and yeah. um, to see how, how far I can go in this life and, um, yeah, see what's next day. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I'll just say thank you, bro. I oh, just want, okay. You know, I really want to say thank you. Oh, thank Winner. you. That's all right, man. Bro, I really appreciate you jumping on. We're, so the next, uh, there's going to be another episode where me and Winner talk yeah. about Survivor. We talk about oh, yes, Winner. And, yes. and I want I want the audience to also get to know Winner and why okay. I actually love this bloke. Oh, thank but you. he's the man. He, he is also a creative genius with making videos. We're going to be making a bunch of videos while we're here. And um, and yeah, freaking, um, this is the first Podcast, bro. This yeah, is history. I reckon it went, it went good. This is history. Like. That was amazing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're gonna yeah, look yeah. back at this and I'm gonna go, bro. Who's your first episode with? Yeah. I'm also winner, man. Oh, thank you. You know what I mean? Like, that's a cool thing. Guy. And uh, yeah, if you've tuned in, I appreciate you tuning in. If you watch the whole thing, make sure you like, share, subscribe. You know, yes, do all that yes. stuff. But um, use in the chat. Don't yeah, use it's good chat. for the algorithm. Yes, but, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, support the potty. Um, this is something that I'm investing in, and I'm putting my own money to produce uh, higher quality production, yep. you know, I'm, I'm now teamed up with Mosul Yissa and he's helping me out and um, we're trying to um, produce some amazing yeah. content and give more insight of who I am yes. and the person that I am. And yes. yeah, hopefully- um, And your fans should also comment what, what else you want to know about him. Cause I feel like your videos, it's all awesome and that, but yeah. the deeper stuff, whatever you want to know, comment and just ask him. Like, yeah, that's a good idea. You should do a Q and A. Yeah, just, or just, just comment on the vid, yeah. comment on the vid and yeah. uh, let me know what you want me to do. and. Um, I'm doing this for you guys, you know, and, and, and uh, I'm grateful the position I'm in is because yeah. people watch my stuff. So I want to commit a, and do more for the people who watch my stuff. So that's yeah. what we're doing here. So uh, yeah. That's amazing. Uh, Jaden Lang podcast. That's what we're calling this, hey, Jaden Lang podcast. I was going to call it Langstrong podcast, but I'm going to call it Jaden Lang podcast. It's pretty similar to me, eh? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Jaden Lang podcast. No, do Langstrong. Keep, nah, keep nah. it consistent, man. <laughs> Nah, nah, nah. Leg strong is leg strong. That's the that's my my bread and my, and my. Right? I like leg fit. <laughs> Stop Bruce saying that, bro. <laughs> I, that I hate when you say that. How how fit are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the Jaden Leg Podcast. We've got guests and everything like that coming yeah. on, but this is this is the end of it. And I appreciate you listening. Thank you so much yep. for tuning in. Thank that's you guys. Shy.